How do you keep from getting cold feet? Well, number one, don't wear too many pairs of socks. In fact, one good pair of socks is even better. And then make sure that you wiggle your toes while you're out hunting. That's what I do to keep from getting cold feet. Now, what about the rest of your body? How do you stay warm? How do you stay dry? That's the things we're gonna be talking about today. Make sure you pay attention because I got tons of little tips all throughout this video. It's some real gold, guys. Plus, we're gonna take a step back in time and look at how technology has changed as far as apparel goes over the last 35 years. I'm Joel Strickland, and this is Surviving Duck Season. Thanks for watching Surviving Duck Season, where we feed your waterfowl obsession and help you to maximize your hunting experience. And today, we're going to be talking about maximizing your time on your hunts by being comfortable. How do we do that? Technology has changed so much over my lifetime. I remember many of my first few years of hunting. I was always cold and wet. Not because I didn't know what I was doing but because that's pretty much the way it was. You just had to be tough if you were gonna go duck hunting very much. As a youngster, I was in scouting, you know, Boy Scouts, and that's where I first learned about layering and staying warm. Now back then, layering meant lots of bulk and weight, just because the technology wasn't there. Back in the 80s, there was lots more technology developed for camping, hiking, ski clothing, and it just took a while for it to make it into the hunting industry. My very earliest days of hunting, I wore my dad's old army jacket. Uh, it wasn't waterproof uh, and it wasn't all that warm as well. Then I got a wax canvas drover coat. It was uninsulated, but it was waterproof. So I just layered underneath it. Now, if it was really, really cold, I'd wear my fur hat. When I was about 18 or 19, my parents bought me my first really good piece of hunting gear. It was a Columbia Omni Quad jacket. It was in mossy oak tree stand. It had a thick, bulky zip in liner, but the shell, the outer shell was magic. It was actually waterproof. Now over the years, apparel has gotten thinner, lighter, and better looking. Now if you're new at duck hunting or just need some new stuff, I'll help you with deciding what you should get. We'll start off by discussing layering. So how do you layer? The idea is that for warmth, a few layers is better than one big bulky layer. Two, three, or four layers is better because the air in between each of the layers in combination with your own body heat will keep you warm. So what kind of fabrics are good if you're not gonna go out and buy all the high dollar gear? Well, don't wear cotton. Uh, a cotton t-shirt as your very bottom base layer because it absorbs water and it'll absorb your sweat or whatever and then it hangs onto it and then eventually you'll get really cold. I do sometimes wear a cotton hoodie like this if I know that it's not gonna get you know wet because of rain or that sort of thing. But if they do get wet, you're in trouble. Wool is great. It's breathable. It keeps you warm even when it gets a little bit wet. But once it gets totally soaked, it does take quite a while for it to get dried out. Fleece is also a fantastic product. It's breathable. It's lightweight. It dries pretty quick and it's durable. Then there's a zillion other types of fabric out there and so many brands of clothing. My experience is you get what you pay for. Now the first two Columbia jackets that I had from like 25 years ago, they're actually still waterproof. Ask anyone that has one from the back in the 80s and 90s and they'll all tell you the same thing. Very well made back then. In the last six or eight years, I bought quite a bit of Drake. The waterproof part of them is just lacking. More on that later in the video. 
With all the different products out there, it's so hard to know which ones to buy. I suggest that if you're on a budget, just go with one piece of gear at a time. You can certainly use some old tech to get you by, you know, fleece and wool. Then mix and match until eventually you can replace what you have. Uh, there's lots of incredible technology available, but it doesn't have to break the bank. So, what do I wear? Well, it depends on the temperature. Normal day of duck hunting for me in Arkansas, this is mid-season and later, it's probably going to get down to maybe 35, 40 degrees at night. Occasionally it gets down to close to freezing. So it's really not that cold. Uh, what I would normally wear is a base layer on the bottom. This is a skin layer. It goes right against your skin. So that's what I wear um, for the top and bottom. These right here, that's what I wear pretty much every day. And then I'll add my waiter pants over the top of that. And then on, on top, I wear my quarter zip pullover right here. Now I'm gonna take a second and give a shameless pitch for these surviving duck season uh, polar fleece mid-layer pullovers. Okay, these are actually made by High and Dry Outdoors and they made a run for me with the Surviving Duck Season logo and uh, the name down the sleeve. Now, if you buy one this week, as well as any of our other merch, our fulfillment company is offering free shipping on all the merch. So for one week only, survivingduckseason.com, link in the description. Now back to layering. Let me give you a recap. Skin layer, top and bottom followed by a second layer, like waiter pants on the bottom, pull over for your top. Obviously, you can always add a jacket on top, but you can also add additional layers as you need them, depending upon how cold it gets. Sometimes I'll add an additional layer of fleece between my base layer and my second layer. I've hunted lots of very cold days in the teens over the past few years with this system and have been very comfortable. There are many quality layering systems out there. I've tried quite a few of them over the years. The ones that I've been using for the past two duck seasons are made by High and Dry. These are some of the best and most affordable ones out there. I'll link them in the description for you. Socks. I used to wear like two or three pairs of socks. In fact, some of my earlier days, we would buy waders like one or even two sizes too big so you can get more stuff in them to insulate your feet. Uh, nowadays, with the insulation factor in a lot of our boots, you don't have to do that. I only wear one pair of socks, period, completely warm enough to do so. I have tried all kinds of socks for years and years, and for the most part, the best I get is about maybe a season out of them before they start wearing out. About two years ago, I found about the best, and it's not a new company, they've been around for a long time, and they're called Darn Tough Socks. I've got two pairs of these right here. They're the Darn Tough Over the Calf. They're the heavier weight socks. And the both the two pairs that I've had, I've been using them for the last two duck season. I have alternated every, you know, every other day because I, I duck hunt every day. And these socks, I mean, you can look at them right there. They, they look like they're, they've been worn a couple of times, but they don't look like they've been worn like, I don't know, a hundred or more times. I mean, these things are phenomenal. Now, after I have my main clothes, then I'm gonna add my high and dry waders and a jacket for the ride to the blind. Now, if I'm walking in, then I usually don't take a jacket or I figure out how I'm gonna pack it in if it's like a really, really cold day. I never wear a jacket when I'm walking to the blind. I get way too hot, then I sweat, and then later I freeze. So trust me on this one. High and Dry makes an incredible neoprene jacket. It's the first neoprene jacket I had ever seen. Kind of like wearing a wetsuit. You, it's, it's super warm. It blocks the rain and the wind. If you're driving a boat or running your ATV or UTV in a driving rainstorm or in the snow or whatever, this is the ultimate jacket for that. I want to address a concern that Many of you have asked about the high and dry breathable waders, and this also relates to m several of the other brands, including Sitka. They do not offer insulation in the legs and chest of the waders, only in the boot part. After three seasons in my high and dry waders, I will not hesitate in telling you 
that I much prefer having no insulation in the waders and having a pair of waders that actually fits you and then layering yourself depending upon if it's a warm or a cold day. And I much prefer this system rather than the bulk insulation that's in other brands that I've used in the past. Okay, what about headwear? Most days I wear a camo ball cap, uh, you know, something like this, and I'll often keep a sock cap or beanie in my bag so I can put it on if it gets cold. I do sometimes like to wear a wax cotton cap, but they can get really hot, so I only wear them on super cold days or if it's raining. If I'm in a layout blind, I'll wear a beanie. This is, you know, snow, or if I'm snow goose hunting, you wear that. Um, I like this kind of style hat. You've probably seen me wearing this on some of my other videos. It's, this one's made by uh, Rig'em Riot. It's a pretty cool knitted hat. It's nice and warm. I like those types of things to wear on cold days. Net gaiters work really well too, as well as even a ski mask. What can you do if you have a jacket that is not waterproof anymore? Because a lot of them get like that. Like I told you before, I've got some old Drake jackets that didn't last, but maybe one season and then they weren't waterproof anymore. What can you do? Well, I found a few years ago, I found this product. And I know there are several other ones um, that you can get, but this one worked really, really well for me. It's called Atsco. Um, I'll put it on the screen. But this is a silicone water guard. You just spray it on top of your garment and it makes it waterproof. Now, it doesn't last forever. You know, you go through one or two rains and then you got to do it again. But hey, it's better than spending two or $300 for a new jacket, at least until you can save up to get one. A couple of quick tips for warming up. Get some hot hands. Uh, I like to get the great big ones. These things last like 12 hours. Some of them are 18 hours. They really do last that long. Um, get them out, shake them up, and then put them in a pocket. These have adhesive. Put one right here in the middle of your chest and one at your low part of your back. And it's amazing how well it'll keep you warm. You can put them on your knees, down around your legs, your ankles, anywhere that you kind of get cold. It, they work fantastic for that. Another thing you can do is if you've got one of these deals that you can put your hands in, or if you've got something in your waders, put them in there. And then that's a place where you can keep your hands warm. Now, do you have a specific jacket or layer that you like? something that's extraordinary. I'd also love to hear about that. Let me know in the comments. Now, if you wanna see more on waders, check out this video right here. I'm Joel Strickland, God bless, and I'll see you on the next video.